Lessons of our Divine Mother Date 6th December Our Divine Mother says We are at one of these hours of God when the old basis gets shaken and there is a great confusion. But it is a wonderful opportunity for those who want to leap forward. The possibility of progress is exceptional. Will you not be one of those who take advantage of it? Says our Divine Mother with my blessing, says our Divine Mother. Words of Sri Aurobindo from the Collective Works of Sri Aurobindo, Volume 19, page 174. Topic the outer action of the avatar. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The Gita lays stress upon the struggle of which the world is the theatre in its two aspects, the inner struggle and the outer battle. In the inner struggle, the enemies are within, in the individual and the slaying of desire, ignorance, egoism is the victory. But there is an outer struggle between the powers of the dharma and the adharma in the human collectivity. The former is supported by the divine, the godlike nature in man and by those who represent it or strive to realize it in human life, the later by the titanic or demoniac, the asuric and rakshasic nature, whose head is a violent egoism, and by those who represent and strive to satisfy it. Our Lord Sri says, This is the war of the gods and titans, the symbol of which the old Indian literature is full, the struggle of the Mahabharata of which Lord Krishna is the central figure being often represented in that image. The Pandavas who fight for the establishment of the kingdom of the Dharma are the sons of gods and their powers in human form. Their adversaries are the incarnations of the titanic powers. They are the Asuras. This outer struggle too, the avatar comes to aid directly or indirectly to destroy the reign of the Asuras, the evil doers and in them depress the power they represent and to restore the oppressed ideals of the Dharma. He comes to bring nearer the kingdom of heaven on earth in the collectivity as well as to build the kingdom of heaven within the individual human soul. Next subtopic, the inner fruit of the avatar's coming. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The inner fruit of the avatar's coming is gained by those who learn from it the true nature of the divine birth and the divine works and who, growing full of him in their consciousness and taking refuge in them with their whole being, Manamaya Mama Upastritaha, purified by the realizing force of their knowledge and delivered from the lower nature, attained to the divine being and divine nature, Madhavam. A Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The avatar comes to reveal the divine nature in man about this lower nature and to show what are the divine works, free, unegoistic, disinterested, impersonal, universal, full of the divine light, the divine power and the divine love. He comes as the divine personality which shall fill the consciousness of the human being and replace the limited egoistic personality so that 
it shall be liberated out of the ego into infinity and universality out of birth into immortality he comes as the divine power and love which calls men to itself so that they may take refuge in that and no longer in the insufficiency of the human wills and the strife of the human fear wrath and passion and liberated from all this unquiet and suffering may live in the calm and bliss of the divine from the collective works of sri aurobindo volume 19 page 176 next up topic constant inward remembrance a large your bindo says the practice of this yoga demands a constant inward remembrance of the one central liberating knowledge and a constant active externalizing of it in works comes in to to intensify the remembrance in all is the one self the one divine is all all are in the divine all are the divine and there is nothing else in this universe this thought or this faith is the whole background until it becomes the whole substance of the consciousness of the worker a memory a self dynamisms meditation of this kind must and does in its end turn into a profound and uninterrupted vision and a vivid and all embracing consciousness of that which we so powerfully remember or on which we so constantly meditate for it compels a constant reference at each moment to the origin of all being and will and action and there is at once an embracing and exceeding of all particular forms and appearances in that which is the cause and upholder whatever we see and hear whatever we touch and sense all of which we are conscious has to be known and felt by us as that which we worship and serve all has to be turned into an image of the divinity perceived as a dwelling place of his godhead enveloped with the external omnipresence from the collective works of sri aurobindo volume 23 page 112 Next up topic renouncing all the inner supports of egoism our lord sri aurobindo says the practice of this integral yoga of sacrifice compels us to renounce all the inner supports of egoism casting them out of our mind and will and actions and to eliminate its seed its presence its influence out of our nature all must be done for the divine all must be directed towards the divine nothing must be attempted for ourselves as a separate existence nothing done for others whether neighbors friends family country or mankind or other creatures merely because they are connected with our personal life and thought and sentiment or because the ego takes a preferential interest in their welfare in this way of doing and seeing all works all life become only a daily dynamic worship and service of the divine in the unbounded temple of his own vast cosmic existence next up topic the emergence of the psychic being our lord sri aurobindo says at a certain stage in the yoga when the mind is sufficiently quieted and no longer supports itself at every step on the sufficiency of its mental certitudes when the vital has been studied and subdued and is no longer constantly insistent on its own rash will demand and desire when the physical has been sufficiently altered not to bury altogether the inner flame under the mass of its outwardness obscurity or inertia an inmost being long hidden within and felt only in its rare influences is able to come forward and illumine the rest and take up the lead of the sadhana 
its character is a one pointed orientation towards the divine or the highest one pointed yet plastic in action and movement it does not create a rigidity of direction like the one pointed intellect or a bigotry of the regnant idea or impulse like the one pointed vital force it is at every moment with a supple sureness that it points the way to the truth automatically distinguishes the right steps from the false extricates the divine or godward moment from the clinging mixture of the undivine its action is like a search light showing up all that has to be changed in the nature it has in it a flame of will insistent on perfection on an alchemic transmutation of all the inner and outer existence it sees the divine essence everywhere but rejects the mere mask and the disguising figure it insists on truth on will and strength and mastery on joy and love and beauty but on a truth of abiding knowledge that surpasses the mere practical momentary truth of the ignorance on an inward joy and not a mere vital pressure for it prefers rather a purifying suffering and sorrow to degrading satisfactions on love winged upward and not tied to the stake of the egoistic craving or with its feet sunk in the mire on beauty restored to its priesthood of interpretation of the eternal on strength and will and mastery as instruments not of the ego but of the spirit its will is for the divinization of life the expression through it of a higher truth its dedication to the divine and the eternal from the collective works of sri aurobindo the volume 23 page 154 these are the words of our lord sri aurobindo